Hi everyone, welcome back to the Hollywood Actors Guide to Surviving the Film and Television Industry. This is your host Jennifer Lynn Warren out here in Los Angeles, California. So let's talk about commercials for a second because commercials are kind of like the easiest thing right now to bring back for actors, for working actors. Um, there's a lot of auditions for them and there's a lot of actors filming commercials that they book in their own homes and it's easier to create a safe environment to film commercials in because you don't need as big of a crew if you write something pretty simple. So that seems to be what's happening. And so I wanted to talk about uh, really quickly that commercial casting directors they don't read your resume the way that other casting directors do. Commercial casting directors read your resume from the bottom up. So the bottom of your resume has all of your special skills and it has your training. So they're looking for special skills that you can do for this and in future auditions. And they're looking to see if you have improv training and if you've been on a set or if you've just been studying acting in general. And they really, it's a great place for new actors to get their start because commercial CDs very rarely care if you were a reoccurring on NCIS. They, they really couldn't care. It doesn't affect their casting at all. So it's a great place to start because as an actor, you can control how many special skills you have because you know you're in control of your life and the classes that you're taking. And you can control like the improv training you have and your acting classes that you've been in. So you are competitive right off the bat if you're taking your training seriously. Another little tip with commercial auditions is just to remember to throw it away. I see a lot of actors putting a lot of weight and a lot of like serious Stanislavski training into their commercial auditions. And I think it's just better to throw it away because the audition for a commercial is more about how you personally relate to the product. You're never the lead in a commercial. I don't care if you're number one on the call sheet. You're not the lead. The product is always the lead of a commercial. There is a quote that says, good mental health is an ongoing dedication to reality at all costs. So that's the quote. As actors, we know that often acting is dedication to the lack of awareness of reality that the character tends to have that puts them into extraneous situations. And this is why when I talk about acting classes and I talk about your mental health, I really stress the fact that you need teachers that are not only going to applaud you when you go to dark places, but it's going to train you how to come out of those dark places and understanding of what kind of conditioning we are having as actors when we are applauded for crying on cue and things like that. But this dedication to reality, it's, it's being able to look at ourselves. It's being able to continue to disconnect yourself from your character, really seeing your whole self, really seeing what's there in life, what our beliefs are, what our behaviors are, not our characters, what our behaviors are, our actions, our words, the thoughts that keep us up at night versus what keeps the characters up at night. Like good mental health, it's the result of acceptance and truthfulness and strength and transparency. And it's going to be what's going to keep you strong working as an actor during COVID. And I hate that we have to keep bringing up this darn COVID thing. We all wish it would just go away, but it doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon. So as I've said in other podcasts, what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it to create work? And on the flip side of that, are you being careful to not get swept away into an alternate reality where you become comfortable as an actor only creating work inside your current little bubble at home so that when the industry bursts back open, which I'm praying that it does, that we, we get a vaccine that is effective and safe, and suddenly a flood of work comes in, are you going to be able to open yourself and be vulnerable on set 
because you have all of this trauma right now that's happening to each and every one of us having to be stuck at home. So I bring this up because I would like you guys to do a mental health check today. I want you to really look at your living situation, your work situation, what your friends and family are feeding you as far as like mental health and and facts and figures and politics and stress and comedy and everything that's happening around you and see if you can really be dedicated to see what is really real in this moment. Ask yourself, have we been through this as humanity before? Yes, we've been through pandemics before. We've been through plagues before. We've come out on the other side and then life has returned to normal. We don't still live in that time of like, um, you know, things changed after the Spanish flu. Of course they did, but life did go back to a normalcy where things just kind of felt right and things feel wrong right now. So what I really want you to do is really take a good dedicated look at reality for your own mental health state because I want you to not only be healthy right now, we need you to be healthy the moment that work starts again. I don't know about you guys, but as an actor, I often feel like we are practically being trained to be psychologists because all we're doing is dissecting the human mind and the motivations and and what's going on there. And sometimes the self-help that we seek in, in therapy, which is why I think therapy is such a famous of not famous but such a it's it's this cool thing especially in Hollywood that actors like to do they love to go to therapy and I think because they know deep down it's also really great actor training and what a lot of therapists will talk to you about are your traumas that you have um, a lot of times from your childhood or past relationships and they'll bring up what are known as survival patterns, which are these hidden blocks that are based on past trauma to keep us safe. Things that we do because we've been hurt before. And if you are a Stanislavski-based actor, then you've had it drilled into you to create a bio for your character. Like what was this character's entire life before you step foot on stage or in front of a camera, right? And so another thing you can look at, because we're always looking at motivation for characters, is what could be the traumas or extreme life events that have threatened or, you know, subconsciously threatened what your character believes is their physical or psychological survivals. And this also works, by the way, in comedy. In fact, this is this is gold for comedy, as horrible as that sounds. So let's take an example. Let's go to Big Bang Theory, because I've been binging it lately. It makes me laugh. Um, and look at Sheldon and the fact he has this place on the couch that no one else is allowed to sit on. Why is this character so passionate about why no one can sit on that spot. Is it because he just really likes it and doesn't want anyone to sit there? No. He reacts as if if somebody takes his spot, it's a life or death situation. And if you've seen the show, you know, he grew up a genius. He was bullied a lot. There's a lot of trauma as an actor he can dig into and the more terrible the trauma it is that he comes up with in his childhood, the funnier it's going to be to the audience when he doesn't want anyone to sit in his spot. And that's how comedy works, guys. That's how the best sitcoms are constructed. It's people in everyday life trying to figure out how to deal with everyday normal things when they have all this trauma coming at them and they're reacting to things in ways that we can relate to because we have a lot of the same traumas in ways that we can relate to people around us reacting that we don't understand because they have traumas. And it sounds crazy to think about like rape or childhood abuse or military combat, um, Ne- just any negative life events, chronic stress, 
unemployment, horrible jobs, abusive relationships, dysfunctional families, all of these things creates the basis for why your characters react the way they do. So you can either do some self-assessment here if someone was going to play you in a movie about your life. Uh, what kind of trauma can they pull from for why they would behave the way you are behaving right now in your life? So it's some good self-reflection right now. And uh, take a look at a sitcom. Pull up some sitcoms. Take a look at the way the characters are reaction. Re reaction. Oh, Lord. Reacting. And um, really in your in your head, because what the actor decided to come up with this story, you may not, I, not ever even know or find out. But in your mind watch a comedy and figure out, I wonder what kind of trauma that actor is playing from that's making me laugh so much right now. It sounds horrible, but hey guys, this is acting. This is what we do. Then thank you so much. I hope you're safe and healthy out there. Relax, take some time for yourself, take some time for your career, break a leg out there. And remember you are not alone.